It's 5.30. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's commission meeting. And I'll begin with calling the meeting to order. And next on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone could rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Commissioners, have you had a chance to review the, the agenda? And do you have any recommendations or modifications? I'm good, Mr. Mayor. I have none, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, then I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. I make a motion that we adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item is appointments. The Economic Development Advisory Board has one resignation. It's an unexpired term that ends January 1, 2022. Applications are due by November 5th of 2020. So the next item is the consent agenda. We had no modifications, so at this time I'll entertain a motion. I move we accept the uh, consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is presentation, a presentation of life-saving awards. Uh, Sean asked, he said that some of them would not be here until 6, and he wondered if we could do that a little bit later, that they're missing some of their participants. Oh, you are here? Okay. Are they both present? Sean. Okay. Okay. So, Sean, uh, commissioners, could we join Chief Wallace? Okay, we're glad to have you guys here, and, and I'm pleased with what you've done for yourselves and for the people involved. On September 14th, 2020, approximately 6 a.m., Jonathan and Nicole LaRue were on their way to work and were about two blocks from their house when they noticed a home with fire showing in the living room. They pulled over and stopped and witnessed a woman standing in the doorway. Jonathan assisted her away from the house as Nicole walked around the house banging on windows searching for other potential occupants. Jonathan called 911 to report the fire and as Nicole came up to a rear bedroom window she found two occupants still inside who were disoriented and could not find an exit. Jonathan and Nicole opened the window and assisted both victims out of the window. <clears throat> Without hesitation, you made a decision that will forever change the life of one of another. You unselfishly risked your life to save the life of another person. This selfless act of bravery most likely saved the lives of two or three fellow citizens. And Mayor, if you would like to present them with awards, you want to read the citation? The citation reads, on September 14th, 2020, you were driving to work and spotted a house on fire and noticed a woman standing in the doorway. You stopped and assisted the woman out of the house and then pulled two victims from a bedroom window without hesitation and unselfishly risked your life to save the life of another person. This life-saving award is awarded by the City of Independence as a result of an act to save or preserve human life that otherwise could have expired without immediate intervention. And this award is hereby presented to Jonathan LaRue and Nicole LaRue on this 22nd day of October, 2020. We really appreciate your, your commitment to serve others and to put your own life at risk to help someone else. So on behalf of the City of Independence and the City Commission, 
Jonathan. It's a pleasure to be part of an award presentation like that. I know we've got so many that have put their own life at risk on our fire, EMS, and, and citizens just like that. And, and uh, Independence is fortunate to have so many people that are willing to do that, to, to see a need and to step in and, and take action for someone else. Thank you. The next item is items for commission action. Item A is consider recommendation of the Planning Commission to adopt an ordinance amending zoning code sections 1701.0 through 1705.0 to remove building inspection responsibilities. And just a clarification, it's just removing the responsibilities from the zoning code um, because they were duplicated in both the building and zoning code and um, the building uh, official does not have responsibilities within zoning that's a zoning administrator so it's just a matter of cleaning things up the Commission initiated the um, text amendment and then the, the uh, Planning Commission held a public hearing and approved it and so it's coming back to you in ordinance form to adopt the text amendment it was at first kind of confusing and you've got to read it with that in mind that mm -hmm. the inspections that are called out are dealing with land use and mm -hmm. and not official inspecting but it does uh, clean up our ordinance quite yes. a bit so yes. commissioners do you have any questions concerning the modification of the zoning code I have none I have none if we have no further questions and I'll call for a motion I make a motion to move to adopt an ordinance amending zoning code sections 1701.0 through 1705.0 to remove building inspection responsibilities. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item B is consider recommendation uh, of the Planning Commission to adopt an ordinance amending zoning code sections appendix A, listing of permitted and conditional uses to allow retail trade not elsewhere listed as a conditional use in an M1 or M2 zone. This is an example of why the, the city code is a living document. We had a business come to us that uh, was located, wanted to locate a new business in a light industrial zone. And uh, as part of that, they're going to produce, um, they're gonna roast coffee and, and extract honey. And they also wanted to have a retail store. Well, our code allowed retail as long as it related directly to what they were doing in their manufacturing operation. Well, they wanted to sell some additional things in there as well, have like a gift store kind of thing. So um, that's when we took it to the commission and you guys initiated the public hearing to do the text amendment. We took it to the uh, planning commission and they unanimously approved it and we're bringing it back to you. But it's an example, you know, if, if we see something in the city code or there's something that doesn't work, it, this is the process to get it changed. So I just wanted to point that out and it is something that we do quite often, but um, it, it just shows that we're all trying to work with these businesses and things to, so that they can be successful in independence. Do you want to 
briefly explain that how the conditional use then would work in this case? So what this would do is that would allow this use only as a conditional use, which means they go through the same process as, um, as a rezoning, actually. It's the same type of process. They have a, a public hearing tw at least 20 days prior to the public hearing. All the property owners with 200 feet, within 200 feet in the city and 1,000 feet in the county are notified. Uh, it's also published in the paper. Then they have the hearing. Um, the Planning Commission makes their recommendation and lists the conditions that they recommend. And then uh, they bring that back to the City Commission after a 14-day protest period and then it goes to the city commission for final action. And so by making this amendment, it doesn't automatically allow that as a right. They have to go through the conditional use process, the neighbors still have a say, and um, it follows that process. But it enables that process to occur. And it would be for any business that's in the M1 zone or M2 zone, not just this business. In the past on conditional use permits, uh, I recall some other conditions that if the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission feels are necessary related to that business that they do have the option to add additional uh, conditions for that use. And they generally do and you'll see that on the next agenda item they have some of those. Okay. And uh, the conditional use is only related to that one to that location business. It and, that, and that business yeah. yes okay commissioners do you have any questions concerning the revision i have none i have none okay if we have no <coughs> further questions and i'll call for a motion i move to ad adopt an ordinance amending zoning code sections appendix a listing of permitted and conditional uses to allow retail trade not elsewhere listed as a conditional use in an M1 or M2 zone. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, item C, consider recommendation of the Planning Commission to adopt a resolution issuing a conditional use permit for a church with specific conditions at 3176 West Main Street. So this is an example of, of one of the conditional uses. They had their public hearing before the Planning Commission. It was uh, the property owners were notified within 200 feet in the city and 1,000 in the county because there was some adjoining county residents. Um, at, the plan, at the Planning Commission public hearing, there was no one that protested it. I didn't receive any any concerns from any property owners and the Planning Commission unanimously approved it with some conditions and uh, they are shown there. Um, I did forget when, to add one in when I did the original Planning Commission recommendation that is actually in the zoning code specifically for churches so I just added that into the ordinance and it's shown in yellow there and it's in your ordinance and it relates to all all churches as a as a special conditional use and the other information is what the Planning Commission recommended okay um, pastor Nobel you requested to address the Commission I was just going to speak in favor of it and that uh, point out a few things that we did we did have KDOT uh, do a traffic flow study and the drainage uh, uh, and all that on it. And so we got them to, to go in and revisit everything since it was a changing of a type of business, I guess you would say, from business to a church, as well as I know the main concern was that there was enough uh, hard pavement there for the to accommodate the parking spaces, which there is ample uh, spaces, I mean, ample hard surface to accommodate everything that we'll be doing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Commission, do you have any questions for city manager or Pastor Norvell? I have none. I have none. Everything's pretty well laid out and explained uh, to us in our packet, so I'm good. Okay. If there's no further questions, then I'll call for a motion. I make a motion. I move to authorize the mayor to sign the attached resolution to grant a conditional use permit 
for a church at 3176 West Main with specific conditions as recommended by the Planning Commission and the special conditions required in Section 1002.1 of the Zoning Code related to churches. Second. If you have a motion and a second, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, consider adopting a resolution declaring a water emergency. I don't know if he wants to, to speak, but he's, he's making his way up here. But we are uh, in getting into a drought situation, and when that occurs, then the uh, state issues orders that restrict the amount of water that we can pump. And I'll let Terry expand on that. We've, we've been notified by the state that, that we're in a drought situation and the uh, natural flows in the river are decreasing. They have set our pumping rate this week, which didn't affect us a whole lot, but they're saying next week it's gonna be a, a totally different situation. Uh, they foresee the natural flows ceasing next week, which will put us in a dire uh, situation. Um, we'll need to talk more about that, but uh, we need to get the word out and start restricting water usage and get our our daily consumption down to uh, some manageable numbers. Yeah, Terry, the you referred to the the natural flow. Is that what would flow down the river without additional release from the? the storage, the reservoirs yes. located along the river? Yes. Um, when you have water rights, they only uh, allow you to pump natural flow. So uh, released water from the reservoir is a different situation. You have to pay for that. And uh, that's probably where we're going to be next week if this goes the way they, they're saying. We're gonna have to look at purchasing some water. Okay, so um, with each passing week, then will they reduce the amount that we're allowed to draw from the river? Pardon me? Will they reduce, if the drought continues, will each week they continue the, to reduce the, our amount of they will reduce it if once the natural flows stop they will tell us to shut our pumps off and cease pumping they will order us to <laughs> and then it becomes a situation of defiance at that point <laughs> okay um, so it's essential that we have rain it, north of us. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have questions for Terry, Mr. Hayes? Well, I don't know how to expand upon what you've already said, Terry, but uh, uh, this has happened before, has it not? We have been into water restrictions by the state? Yes. And is this comparable to action that we took the last occurrence? Yes. Uh -huh. I also remember that we had a rather catastrophic uh, contaminant in our water supply not too long past, and we were also in a water emergency during that period, is that correct? Yes, yes, we were not allowed to pump water until the contaminants were contained. Um, and was, is this measure similar to the action taken during that water emergency? In, in, that, in that situation, we basically restricted, it was much more restrictive. That, that's that, when businesses- That, that was a short term situation that, that they, you know, said if you can go two or three days 
we'll be all right. Um, this could last two or three months. It's all dependent on the rainfall. So I we, see. So what you alluded to earlier in your comments was that uh, in addition to uh, to declaring a water emergency that we would also be asking um, or negotiating some type of uh, release water from the reservoirs at some additional cost to the city. Is that correct? That's correct. We, we will be having discussions with the state and uh, to see what can be done and what the cost of that will be. So I'm assuming that uh, the additional cost won't immediately cause a change in uh, water, uh, residential water rates, so that will have to be paid for out of reserves? It, it would have to come out of reserve. I'm looking at the third quarter financial statement right now. It looks like we do have some reserve monies. So. Uh, that's all the questions I have. <clears throat> Commissioner, are you so saying? Okay, I'm good. Thank you for the explanation, Terry. <clears throat> I don't think I have any further questions. I think you explained <clears throat> our situation well enough. So if there are no more questions, then I'll entertain a motion. I move to adopt a resolution declaring a water emergency and implementing water conservation. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item E, consider a request to allow Smoke and Bros to use the public right of way west of 223 West Main on October 23rd and 24th, 2020. Mayor, uh, I'm representing Smoke and Bros tonight. Uh, this was, they were going to be doing a cookout at the brewery Friday and Saturday evening. Initially, they was gonna set up a, over in the Walgreens and have permission, but they're kind of a different setup. They're a tent and kind of picnic tables and spacing out. So they thought it would be asked if it would be better to come over on the private property, which that requires permission from the commission. So this is kind of a unique thing, and it was a last-minute thing, trying to get it all figured out. We were sorry for a last-minute change to the agenda, but trying to accommodate them so that they can have this Friday and Saturday evening downtown. The, the, the distance between the building and the curb is quite limited. Yeah, they so are. So they're actually going to use The parking, parking spaces, also. yes. Parking okay. spaces in the right-of-way along that side. and. I have spoke with the brewery and they are fine with mm -hmm. giving up that parking and allowing that for those two nights. Okay. And the requests for barricades were to go along the, the edge of the traffic flow? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Yususi, do you have any questions? No, I had a chance to talk to this gentleman uh, representing Smoking Bros and I passed that on to Dave who's uh, taking care of all the questions they've had. and and uh, got it to this point to where we can move forward and approve it. Okay. Commissioner Hayes, any questions? Just one, and that is for clarification. Uh, the the north-south traffic on 9th Street in, on that block will uh, be still be available, right? Yes, the street will still be open. We're just going to block some of the parking in the right-of-way. Thank you. Okay, are there any further questions, commissioners? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, if not, then I'll call for a motion. I make a motion, move to authorize Smoke and Bros to use the sidewalk and parking on the west side <clears throat> of the Indy Brew Works on the east side of 9th Street on October 23rd and 24th. Do I have a second? Second. Do you have a motion and a second? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is reports. Um, item A is the city board minutes. Commissioners, do you have any uh, questions regarding those minutes? I have none. I have none. Uh, item B is Veterans Day 
of Honor Parade on Saturday, November 7th, 2020 at 2 p.m. Any information? Or is that just a it's notice? It's just a letting you know about it. <clears throat> okay. And uh, Cherry, item C is a Cherry Street Bridge grant. It's just uh, we put the letter in your packet that we didn't get that grant, but we're going to try again next year. Okay. Next item is the city manager's comments. I wanted to uh, report to you that Heckert was back in town yesterday and paved Coffeyville from second to <clears throat> cement. Dean from Railroad to Cottonwood and 15th from Sycamore to Cottonwood. And um, this portion was completed. This portion's completed. And this is completed. And what they have left is that little um, area by the airport on the entrance drive. And they plan to be back in a few weeks to do that. And then we have uh, the city treasurer's report was completed today. So we included copies of that, emailed them to you. <clears throat> and then if, um, if, if there's anything you want Lacey or David to go over. The water plant treatment upgrade, it shows uh, <clears throat> a deficit in the ending balance is <clears throat> So the, the two funds that have deficit balances are the first one, like you said, the water treatment plant upgrade. Um, that is for the design of phase two. And for the loan, we typically don't request um, loan disbursement until construction has begun. And in that first construction pay application, we submit all of the engineering design fees. And then the second is the Peter Pan geometric project. And that one, the, the deficit balance is a portion um, of the county's portion that they have reimbursed to us in October. So it's not on this September statement. And then uh, the request that we have sent into the state for the, the grant portion is still outstanding. They have all the documentation, but we're just waiting for them to to fund us the money. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't catch it until till late, so I'll look it over and if I have any questions I'll call Kelly and we can visit. Commissioners, do you have any question for Lacey about the treasurer's report? I do not. I do not, Mayor. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you, Lacey. So the, the next item I have is that uh, we'd like to announce that we're working on our next step towards reorganization, which is the recruitment of a city engineer, public works, and utility director position. And this will replace uh, Public Works Director Mike Passeur and Utilities Director Terry Leibarger, both of whom are scheduled to retire within the next six months. Uh, we anticipate it will take some time to find the right candidate for this position. Uh, many years of knowledge and experience will be lost when these department directors mm -hmm. retire. And we want to ensure we transfer as much information as possible to the new department director to ensure a seamless transition. Uh, the new engineer will supervise all public works and utility departments and projects, including streets and sanitation and operations of the water and wastewater plants. And the position also requires a significant involvement in both short and long-term planning for the city's infrastructure. Once the engineer's position is filled, uh, the city plans to add clerical support for that position. One of our overarching goals is improving customer service and hiring a qualified city engineer with necessary clerical support will be vital steps in improving services to and to and communications with our citizens and keeping projects on target. And we have a brochure that we've put together and a news release and there's a copy for each of you. Lewis, if you
And that will post um, later tonight. Okay. Yeah, it seems like it could uh, aid in a lot of the planning that where we've relied on outside experience uh, to bring it in-house and get you a, a lot quicker turnaround and then also give us some eyes to uh, relieve some of the pressure of building inspection now in the specialty trades. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a good reorganization. I'd hate to have the loss of the two employees, a lot of experience, and I know they've dedicated a lot of time, and their heart has definitely been in their, their job and given us many years of quality work. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, over 70 years between them, a service. Yeah. They all seem very happy, yeah. smiling. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I, I can see it with the mask on. I can see you're smiling still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so that that's uh, pretty much all I have other than the um, conversation on the Labette. Um, incentive. Uh, Commissioner Hayes will be out of town on the 12th, but he's going to participate by phone. But we thought everybody should be in per here in person for that conversation. It would be better. Yes. And so we're suggesting revisiting that topic on November 19th. Yes, that'd be much better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that accommodation. It is of course, because of the scheduling of the events, uh, our meetings within November, it is mm -hmm. a seven-day uh, delay in our conversation, which uh, doesn't seem to be substantive. So thank you for that accommodation. Sure. No problem. And that's pretty much all I have, other than we'll have some water plant things on the agenda for next, next time. Okay. Uh, next item is commissioner comments. Commissioner Hayes. I'm, uh, I'm delighted with the completion of the street repaving uh, projects this year, and uh, I look forward to us continuing the work that we have uh, started with that, uh, identifying those streets that uh, are needing uh, attention and getting them uh, taken care of in order. And so um, uh, one thing we've already discussed about street repairs is that um, the sooner we can identify those streets that will be uh, repairing in the next fiscal year, the sooner we can also take a look at any other um, um, utilities that might need attention in those areas so that we don't turn around and tear up the new street surface immediately following its being placed down because of uh, uh, maybe timing of projects. So thank you. Commissioner Yususi? Yes, um, I think I talked on this at our last meeting, but uh, I'm going to encourage people to get out and vote. It's an important election for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it's a national election. Uh, but secondly, we're looking at uh, a sales tax issue that we want to, that will sunset, and we want to see it extended so we can continue to move forward and address infrastructure and other needs of the city. So as a citizens of, of Independence, I encourage you to get out and vote. If you're uh, concerned about getting out uh, and voting on Election Day, you can vote at the county clerk's office. You can go in. There's not a line. There's usually not anybody waiting to vote. So you can pick your time at, at, during their office hours and vote. But it's important as a citizen of this city that you exercise your right you have a right to vote and you need to make your voice heard. <clears throat> and we want to continue to be a progressive city, continue to address the needs of the community, not only now, but into the future. And it's very important to whether independence uh, continues to move forward. So I'm encouraging you all to get out and vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you, commissioners. Um, the only thing I'd like to, to mention as a reminder about the COVID uh, crisis, the pandemic that we are 
still seeing increased numbers of active cases. Um, masks are essential that we all participate wearing masks in public, watch our, our gatherings. Um, we're right on the, the edge of seeing uh, some other requirements possibly needed to curb the, the flow of infections. Uh, one thing that we've got to remember is the advanced cases do require medical attention and the area hospitals are seeing the influx and the impact that ICU beds are being filled, regular beds for less severe being filled. Uh, there's a strain on, on the healthcare workers because of the hours and because of the time involved uh, to care for those sick. So the best thing we can do is avoid exposure that this isn't a political pandemic, it is, it is real. And uh, I think over the, the last weekend, the, the nearest bed was St. Joe or? Uh, two weeks ago it was Little Rock, Arkansas, and this last weekend it was St. Joe in Kansas City. So, you know, these, these are facts that what healthcare is dealing with and the way we can help them is watch our exposures. The mask works when we all wear it, so in case we're a carrier that is asymptomatic, we're not experiencing the symptoms that we block the spread. Because if you're depending on the mask alone to protect you, the, the chance of still contracting COVID is 70%. If you're not wearing a mask and somebody that's contagious is wearing a mask, I believe it, it drops to 15%. But if both of you are wearing a mask, it drops to 1.5%. So, you know, this is something we've got to come together to look that we're responsible for, for our friends and our family and independence. So we need to do our job here that we protect each other again, just, you know, like uh, Jonathan and, and Nicole stepped out to help someone else, wearing your mask, avoid gatherings, be careful is how we're gonna protect each other. So uh, appreciate everything that everyone's doing and particularly, I gotta say it again, our staff has been doing an excellent job of protecting the city employees because you gotta you gotta remember what happens if COVID comes in to a department and how it can impact fire EMS or sanitation or street departments that it can really bring the city to a stop. So you know staff has been doing uh, Kelly and David have been doing an excellent job of looking ahead and making the necessary arrangements to reduce our employees' risk. And I want to thank them and thank everybody else for doing their part, too. So with that, the next item on our agenda is uh, public concerns. Uh, David, we have none. Okay. now. The next item is an executive session, and for those that are on Facebook, uh, the executive session is going to be restricted to uh, city staff for uh, the purpose of matters relating to security of a public body or agency, public building or facility, or the information systems of a public body or agency. So it will be limited to staff and, and due to uh, technical restraints of, of broadcasting on Facebook, we can't stop and then come back in without starting uh, another session of Facebook. 
So what we will be doing is ending the broadcast on Facebook, but what there will be no action taken after the executive session, and after the executive session, we'll entertain a motion for adjournment and then go to adjournment. So I just want to, if you're watching on Facebook, I want you to be aware that we can't come back on just for emergent the uh, adjournment or we would be having to start a new broadcast. So uh, with, with that then, uh, I will move that we recess for an executive session pursuant to the security exception KSA 75-4319B12 for matters relating to security of a public body or agency, public building or facility, or the information system of a public body or agency. And the meeting will be limited to city staff only, city attorney. the attorney and, and videographer. our videographer. And I want to thank everyone else for coming. And uh, the open meeting will resume at 7.15. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.